I joined the South African Air Force on the 1st of April 1940. In the training we had 303s in the ferry battle and uh, after the training we were qualified air gunners. We had OTU at Chandeur, that was uh, the latter half of uh, 1941 where we crewed up. We were on Maryland to start with on the OTU, then they converted us to Boston. Yeah. And, uh, we were eventually posted to 24 Squadron at the end of November, December 1941. When we uh, joined 24 Squadron, uh, I left the, my original crew and uh, joined uh, the Colonel's crew. We used to operate at 10,000 feet. So we were susceptible to anti-aircraft fire. Well, to start off with, uh, we were bombing airfields only at Alamein, when Montgomery was running the 8th Army. We were doing close support uh, with the 8th Army, and we were bombing transport, German troops, and some of the airfields up to Tobruk that we were uh, being occupied by the Luftwaffe. We bombed them as well. Montgomery, or one of the Army chiefs reckoned that the Bostons were responsible for the victory at Alamein because we were bombing it three or four times a day there. Uh, all empty transport, uh, German troops and all the rest of them. But uh, life in the desert, we lived on uh, bully beef and uh, whatever. But we weren't far from the sea. We used to go down occasionally have a, have a get into the sea here. Yeah. One of the raids to a place called Barchi. Uh, we were intercepted on the way home and uh, by two 109s. And uh, the, the first, the one they got flying number three, the stair, he was shot down. Subsequently, we were shot down and we were about two k's apart. And uh, the third one got home. Uh, that was a Saturday morning, the 21st of March, 1942. I only had one gun underneath, and the guy up top had two, two brownies. Yeah. And uh, when he, this lot happened, Von Aysen said, uh, it looks like uh, Kitty Hawks are approaching. And the Mossops were, okay, keep an eye, but they were, they were 109s, they weren't Kitty Hawks. But you could hear the guys firing, you know, BB was having a go here. But I couldn't see what was going on because I'm looking at, at the ground. I'm lying on my belly, you see. Well, they hit us, well, they hit Fustay first. He was number three, hit him. And we were only at about, not even a thousand feet. And he went underneath us and crashed. So just the two of us, and now they kicked us on the port side and they hit uh, the petrol tanks, but we were on fire, and he hit uh, the pilot, uh, Jack Mossop, in the shoulder. He got a direct hit here. Reeby fell over, and I got up and fell over on the, onto the ground here. Yeah. We lay there, and after we sorted ourselves out, uh, Jack Mossop was in a bad way after getting it. We all got out of the aircraft. He had a broken uh, shoulder blade and his legs was broken, one leg was broken. The other guy had a, uh, his ankle was damaged. So they couldn't get anywhere. But I could walk around a bit. Look, when the fire had, uh, when it had died down, that later that afternoon, all I had was a packet of uh, C2C -C cigarettes and uh, nothing else. So I got back into the aircraft, went to the tail, and here we had one canister of water, but a bloody bullet had gone through about halfway. So we had half a canister of water. So I got that out. So my Australian navigator, Colborne, he said he was burnt. He had no eyebrows, he had a moustache, that was a bit burnt, but he was able to walk. So. Uh, we were behind the German lines and uh, at, at Gazala, and eventually uh, the guy was picked up by a 
uh, Army Patrol, which we believe was the Long Range Desert Group. He eventually got home about, well, got to the Allied lines on the Monday, and in, they informed the RAF, and um, they eventually sent out a Lysander to uh, try and locate where the Colonel was. So, but for Steers aircraft was about two k's further on. Uh, Jack said, see what you can get from that other aircraft. So I went across there, but I couldn't get in because there's a dead gunner lying there in the aircraft. I couldn't get into the back. Before that Lysander pitched up, he said, Dick, I think tomorrow you must bug her off. I said, oh, what? <laughs> so, but I didn't have to go because the lines end up pitched up the next day. So he landed in the desert next to us and he had a doctor with him. The doctor looked at us and he said, okay, I must fly back with the Lysander. I'll stay with these two guys. And uh, eventually they sent out an ambulance uh, aircraft to repeat with a fighter escort the next day. And um, they were picked up. We were all dumped into a casualty clearing station at, uh, behind at Gambut, which was an RAF uh, forward field. And the, the doctors were all Australians. So we were there and um, the doctors operated on us for what they could do. And then they put us into a bomb bay and the RAF flew us to, to Cairo. Jack Mossop, he were he was there, and Rebe van Aysen and I were in one of the wards. And uh, Field Marshal Smuts came to uh, the hospital, but he didn't interview us, we were just bloody sergeants, but he interviewed Jack Mossop. And uh, there's a picture of him in the book. After that, I was about a fortnight in the hospital. Yeah. I went to see a, a Major Joseph. It, uh, Air Force headquarters in Cairo, and he said, I'm going to put you on a houseboat on the Nile for a fortnight so you can relax. So I lived like a lord for a fortnight, then I went back to the desert, and then I flew with a sky Captain Smith, and he and I, uh, with his other two members of the crew, we finished our operations at the time of Alamein. That was August, September, 42. So one day in the 70s, I was on the ski slopes at a place called Solden in Austria. So on the, my instructor was an old toppy and we were having a glue vine afterwards. And um, I said, where were you during the war? Were you with the Russians or no? He said, no, I was with the Africa Corps. Oh, I said, that's interesting because I was also there. I said, but I was in the Bostons. He said, oh, those guys gave us a lot of trouble. He was an MT driver with the Africa Corps. But uh, that was uh, Alamein.